Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're here to talk about the ribbon emitters. So this is one of the uh, super tools that's included with your Popcorn FX uh, plugin, uh, the ribbon emitter, and I'll talk about all the parameters and attributes that you can modify to create some really cool effects like the ones you see on the screen right here. So if you want to follow along, you actually have this uh, as part of your uh, uh, resource pack with the Popcorn FX plugin, you'll have these projects. If you go to your project tab up here under the Popcorn FX tools folder, you'll find this ribbon functions project. And uh, all this stuff here, if we play back, you can see uh, demonstrates a variety of different uh, effects that you can achieve with the ribbon emitter. And I'm just going to use one of these to modify it and kind of show you how you can achieve, you know, various effects as we move along through this tutorial. Okay, but first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and delete most of them. Uh, we're only going to use a couple, so I'm going to go to my scene here. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete all the billboards, which are just the texts that you see here with the uh, white text. So just delete all those. And under particles, I'm just going to disable all of them, except for this follow particle, which is one of the most basic uh, ribbon effects that you can possibly have. And I'll show you that in just a moment as I disable all the rest of these, since we don't want them to be simulating as we simulate our single, because we want to focus on this one here. Let's press the F hotkey to focus on it here. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the difference between the particle or the uh, ribbon emitter and the texture emitter. So we're going to go to our content tab here under our set uh, tab up here and under well, particles let's go through the folder again here particles and the popcorn effect super tools and then we have the ribbon emitter and the texture emitter so i'm just going to go ahead and bring in the texture emitter beside this one here we'll take a look at the comparison so the texture emitter if we go to our popcorn effects tab in the particle settings it has basic attributes lifetime rotation force and physics and up here we will have a 8x4 Sprite Atlas, and we'll have the option for Sprite Mode and Align Mode up here, okay? So these are basically the only differences between the Ribbon Emitter and the Texture Emitter. So I'm going to go up here to Ribbon Emitter now, uh, select our Ribbon Emitter. You can see we have the same thing, but we have 4x1 Sprite Atlas as opposed to the 8x4 Sprite Atlas, okay? And we also have this section here with the uh, resource list, and... With the particle set or the ribbon emitter, we have ribbon settings. We don't have the other stuff that the particle or that the texture emitter has. So the ribbon settings are the basic uh, we're going to explore in just a moment here. All right. So the texture emitter is basically the closest thing to the ribbon emitter. I just wanted to show you that as a comparison there. They're very similar. All right. But let's go ahead and focus on this follow uh, ribbon emitter right now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and press Shift S to simulate. You can also go up to the very top here. And click this simulate button, but who has time for that? Let's press Shift S. All right, so we're just simulating this basically beam of light just being shot off, a uh, ribbon of light, I should say, being shot up into the atmosphere. Let's take a look at this uh, by looking at a couple of the attributes uh, down here under particle settings. All right, so this is where we're going to take a look at first. We have basic attributes: there's lifetime minimum, lifetime maximum, and global scale. If we change our lifetime minimum to a value of like 1, for example, and maximum to 1, you'll see that we'll have a much shorter life for our particle effects. It'll kind of end right about there. And if we take it back up to 3, for example, we will have longer particles. It'll go up further into the atmosphere. All right, so ribbons, I should say, instead of particles. Uh, and then there's global scale. So if we increase global scale, you'll see that we'll have uh, larger ribbons and they'll be going faster as well. So global scale basically enhances the size and the speed of your uh, ribbon going up into the atmosphere there. Let's just leave that back at one. All right, so that's the basics. We're not going to explore that too much. Pretty simple stuff, the basic attributes. Let's go now to ribbon settings. This is where all the meat, meat and potatoes are uh, in the ribbon effect with the ribbon emitter here. And you can see that we have ribbon movement type set to follow. Okay, so follow is just basically going to emit the ribbon in a straight line following the particle. So when you look at a ribbon, you, what, you want to, what you want to look at first is there's actually a particle that's leading that ribbon. So think of it as a kind of like a meteor. Uh, there's a particle, which is the meteor, and the meteor has a tail, okay, which is the ribbon in this case. So the particle is shooting off, and it has this bright blue and purple tail behind it. Okay, so we have follow selected. If we choose linear polarization, you'll notice that we start going off in this kind of weird snake pattern. Now, if I press the W hotkey uh, with my uh, emitter selected there, there we go, you can see that uh, it's only going along the red x-axis. If we go over here to a 90 degree angle, 
it looks like a straight line. So we're only going along one single axis. And that's basically what linear polarization is. We'll talk about that more in just a moment. Uh, let's go now to circular polarization. And now we're getting a nice smooth circle that's uh, shooting off a circular ribbon pattern that's shooting off into the atmosphere there. Okay, and then we also have circle confinement here as well. So if we select center confinement, uh, it's just going to basically confine everything more to the center. And we'll talk more about that in another example in just a moment here. It also works for uh, linear polarization as well. So you can see it's a much, you know, basically kind of the particle kind of goes in a, almost a straight line uh, center up, but it has kind of a, a tail that goes side to side. All right, so that's what center confinement does. Let's change linear polarization to circular polarization and take this off. Now, another thing we want to make sure that we check off is if we go down here, we have this barrel uh, item selected. Okay, so this barrel option will ensure that our, our particles are limited to a barrel shape. We don't want that right now, so I'm going to take that off. Okay, we don't see much of an effect right now, but I'll show you more of that effect later. Okay, and then we have ribbon width and ribbon, ribbon length. Pretty straightforward. Let's just change to follow this time. Uh, ribbon width. As you can imagine, creates a fatter particle like this, a big Kirby-like uh, particle emitting, and ribbon width, blah, 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 like that. Pretty simple. Let's just leave it at a uh, value of uh, 1. Let's press 1 there. Ribbon length. Uh, this one you got to be careful with because it can really, uh, if you extend the ribbon, it can just shoot off into infinity and never kind of stop. It'll just kind of connect ribbon to ribbon. And that, of course, depends on your emit rate which is up here. Okay, so we have a very slow emit rate right now at 0 0.5, or very low, I should say. It almost seems like uh, this one here, let's just change it to something like, we have like a pulsating stream of light just kind of shooting up into the atmosphere, and you can see it just goes up like that. So maybe some kind of alien abduction beam could be good for an effect like that. You can increase your ribbon length. But let's just double click the ribbon length and take it back down to one. If we double click the text, it'll take it back to the default value there. And here we go. All right, so let's change this back now to circular polarization. And we're going to take a look at spin angle. So spin angle, you can see right now, is at zero. If I change this to a value of 45, for example, you'll notice if we go to the side here that we're, create, we're emitting at a value of 45. We can change that to 90. Enter a 90 there. And now we're kind of shooting off at a 90 degree angle from the red x-axis, okay? From here, it looks just like this. A little curly ribbon going like that, and here it'll just look like a straight line going up like that. Okay, so that's the basics of spin angle. It also works for linear polarization as well. Okay, so 90 degrees right there. You can change it to 45 degrees. Whoops, not just a radius. There you go. That's at a 45 degree angle like this. Good stuff. Pretty simple, straightforward. Let's just take that back down to zero and circular polarization. Now, uh, we have a couple other ones here coming up. Circular radius, very important. Now, this dictates the radius of your circular pattern, basically. If you look at uh, this thing from top down, you can press the G hotkey uh, to get a top down view like this. And you can see it's shooting off the emission like this. Circular radius, we can pump it up. And we get a much larger radius. Very straightforward, okay? So circular radius, large. Circular radius, small. Okay. Uh, pretty simple. And if we uh, press the F hot key to get a front view, uh, we can see the effect. Circular radius, large. Circular radius, small. All right. Pretty straightforward, simple stuff. Let's just uh, take that to uh, and a value of zero. We'll just kind of almost be like center confinement. Okay. We can center confine there and make it even more confined. All right. But let's just change our circular radius to something like five, maybe. Maybe five is a bit too high. Two. All right. Now, next is spin speed. I like spin speed because you can create some really cool effects with it. If you pump up spin speed to like a value like this, you can create like kind of like a cool retro 80s kind of grid uh, lighting type effect, which I really like. If we change this to barrel, you'll see the spin effect uh, more completely. And it'll kind of go up into a barrel as it approaches the uh, top there as well. Okay. We're kind of getting cut off by the... Uh, <laughs> by the ceiling there, but you can imagine it starts like this as a barrel and then goes up into a barrel shape um, as the particles die out, or as the ribbon dies out there. So that's, that's basically barrel. Uh, skip ahead to barrel, I guess, there, no worries. But spin speed, you can make a very low spin speed and have a very lazy ribbon just kind of shooting off into the sky. This could be useful for, you know, a ghost maybe emitting 
uh, a ghost kind of shooting off from the ground or something like that. I also forgot to mention here random direction from center. Right now we have that selected, so it's kind of emitting at random places around our emitter. You can see there, it emits there uh, in relation to where our emitter actually is. So one on the top left there, this one's on the left, and one on the top right over there. So if we take that off, what's going to happen is they're all, they're all going to emit from right over here consistently, right at the arrow of our x-axis there. If we take that on, some will emit from different parts. Okay, so basically this random direction from center, that's what it means. Okay, so let's uh, pump up our spin speed a little bit, maybe this something like 5. Okay, we get a kind of a cool thing like this. Uh, maybe a little bit lower. There we go. Okay, now radius increment emission and radius increment lifetime. These are two things that are kind of, uh, you know, fun to mess around with. Now, radius increment is a value of 1 right now. If we pump that up, just think about the radius increment as, um, like I mentioned before, there's a particle shooting up into the sky in a circular pattern, and the tail behind it is the ribbon. If we increase the radius increment to something like this, basically that particle is going to get further and further away from the center as it proceeds up into the atmosphere there. So that creates a kind of a, a V-type effect for your ribbon pattern. Okay, So it'll get larger as it approaches the top there. The be careful with this uh, attribute here because it's very. We have a lot of values here. You can really pump that up exponentially like this if you want. Okay, you can double click it and take it back down to the default value of one there. Now radius increment is kind of like the opposite. So radius increment is how the latter part, the trailing part of the ribbon expands, uh, the further you get. So if I increase this to a uh, value of ten, for example, notice that our, our initial particle still kind of goes in the same close pattern, but the base of our ribbon spreads out a lot more. So that's what radius increment lifetime does, is it spreads out the base of your ribbon a lot more. Now there's radius increment fade out, which doesn't really have a whole ton of effect, to be honest. Um, if you increase this, uh, basically it's just going to fade out the bottom part a lot faster. I'm not sure if you can really notice that, but uh, the bottom part will fade out faster, whereas if we take that down to zero, It'll stay, stay around a little bit longer. Now for smoothness and turbulence, I'm going to use a different emitter. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make our follow one invisible. And let's go to our turbulence emitter, which is right beside his brother right here. Now let's shift S to uh, start the simulation. And you'll notice that we have a kind of a ribbon that kind of shoots off in a kind of a weird, snaky, almost like a cigarette smoke type pattern. And this is indeed how you would achieve, you know, cigarette smoke if you were, you know, to use that, use that particle effect for that. Now, the ribbon settings right here, we can see that we have turbulence set to a value of 1, and ribbon smoothness set to a value of 1 as well. If we take that turbulence down to 0, then we just have the follow, okay, the linear polarization, and we have center confinement, okay, take that off, and we have something like this, okay. So, center confinement, we're just shooting off in a straight line. However, if we increase the turbulence for that, we can get kind of a cigarette smoke type drifting. We can increase the turbulence even further. And you can see we get kind of like, you know, sharp edges on our turbulence as well. We can uh, smooth that out by using ribbon smoothness, okay? If we pump up the ribbon smoothness, you'll see we get a smoother value. I'm just going to take this down a little bit here. All right. Now you have to find like a happy medium for all these. You can see that even with uh, a lower turbulence like this, if our smoothness is too high, it's kind of over smoothing. So it's creating some edges as well. So you want to kind of try and find a happy medium for this. And, uh, you know, I think maybe something like this is okay. Uh, you can double click the uh, values there and get a ribbon turbulence of zero. And maybe something like this, okay? And you can achieve that uh, super high ribbon turbulence. Uh, some cool effects you can achieve like that as well. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the turbulence. I'm going to just uh, leave the ribbon smoothness at a value of something like that, whatever it is. And we're going to go ahead and change this to circular polarization and center confinement take it off and we're going to just uh, change our spin speed something a little bit higher okay and we'll just leave it like that now down here we have ribbon velocity and ribbon gravity okay so these are pretty self-explanatory uh, if you want your velocity to you know go further along the x-axis there you go okay so the red x-axis a positive value is shooting off to the right there and it's still trying to get back to the center, okay? So the ribbon will always try to uh, um, kind of rotate or revolve around the center, I guess I should say. 
Okay, and you can change that to a negative value, and there you go. Okay, pretty straightforward, and it works for the Z, X, and Y axes as well. We'll just change this back down to zero. You can also use the gravity. Uh, one thing that's kind of cool to do is, you know, change the gravity, put a lower gravity on the uh, negative gravity value, and you'll have like a falling ribbon like this. So right now the ribbon is fighting against gravity, trying to get up, but uh, the gravity keeps bringing it down. You can do the opposite thing. So you can shoot off like ribbons like that, and we can, you know, have coils of ribbon just kind of shooting off into the sky like that. So, you know, fairly, fairly simple stuff. We'll just leave the uh, values right there at zero. And those, those can also be, you know, modified by these emit positions, emit volumes, and directions, and all this stuff here as well. And uh, you can also modify this with initial speed. So a slower initial speed, you'll see the ribbon will, even an initial speed of zero will just kind of focus like that. You need to have some initial speed in order for your ribbon to shoot off into the sky. Change it to a value of 10. Whoops, not 1. 10, it'll go like way high like that. Okay, so zoop, just shooting off really fast. So you can modify all these values as well. And we talk about these in other tutorials. I'm not going to spend too much time on these. So that's about where we're going to end it off here. We cover other parameters such as the ribbon twist and other examples in the learning samples pack such as the school of fish and other tutorials. So make sure you check those out on our YouTube channel. And if you have any further questions, you can always check us out at forum.reillusion.com and ask your questions there as well. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot and I'll see you in the next video.